Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Blessed is he that preaches a very short message. For he shall be heard again. Romans 12 shall we stand and give God's word on verse 21. Or verse 20. Come on, let's read together. I want to do it. Go. Therefore, if thy have you gotten it? Can I hear you read it? Verse 20. Come on, read it out loud. You have not found it. If you have found it, I know you'll find it. Sing, read it. I'm already hearing the voice of one person. Romans 12 verse 20. <laughs> Therefore, God should know that I'm a Nigerian before writing this Bible. He should know that I am an Igbo man. He should know that you came from a polygamous family. We have so many wives have done evil to others. You should know that you are a stepchild when you were born, your mother died or your father died and you were taken care of by your uncles and they did maltreat you. They never knew that a man they are maltreating is going to be a medical doctor or a, or a governor. Now that I am a governor, don't give me the scripture. An opportunity has come for me to deal with them. It's a time of revenge. Why should God write this kind of thing in the Bible? See that if you can. Why? God, why? Why should you bring this scripture to me now that I'm comfortable? Now that I'm rich? Now that I have an opportunity to deal with the people who has dealt with me in the time past? Why? It is time for me to deal with them. They abandoned us. Nobody to pay my school fees. Now that I'm trained, I suffered, labored, became what I am. You're bringing the scripture. Pastor, close that Bible and tell me how to deal with these people. Close that Bible. Don't hesitate. Why should God Allow you to feed the people that planned your death. Why? 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 The reason why God wants you to feed them is because he doesn't want their blood to be upon your head. You listen to me. He doesn't want their blood to be upon your head. He doesn't want their sorrow to be tied to you. That is why he said feed them then allow me to give them my green headache. Allow me. Because the way I will punish them will not be the way you punish them. And when you punish them, that means you're taking the laws into your hand. So let me deal with them. Feed them, feed them, give them water, give them clothing, give them shelter, and wait for me to come out. My anger and in my judgment. Verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Is this on your Bible? I want to hear myself better like I had on Wednesday. Friends of God, one early morning while I was living in this compound, I got a Range Rover car, a black Range Rover car, and in the morning, I came out Warm the car. While I was steaming the car, I am not taking my Bible. I heard a voice that said to me, Go out to a Papa right now and visit Susan so pastor. And when you visit him, I will tell you what to do to him. Hmm. Friends, 
it was difficult for me because that pastor has done so much evil to me, has so much maligned me, has so much spoken so many words that can destroy my reputation. And my reputation is my, my, my medium of exchange. That is what I used to market my life. And if you kill my reputation, you have killed my future. Not just my future, you have killed the future of my children and the future of the people that will come out of me. Because if my reputation is killed, then there will be no food on the table. Then there will be no good name that can become a visa to so many people. That means my life is finished and the life of my generations are finished. The life of my church members will be finished. Because anywhere they mention my name and you say you are from Ugoem's church, that means a closed door. I say, I'm not going. And the Lord said to me, son, go to that man's house. Friends, I started a car. Drove to the man's house. When I came out, he was about going out. <laughs> I said to him, man of God, I came to see you. God told me to come and visit you. He looked at me. He said, God told you. He said, yes, I heard his voice. You know what he said? He said, so he, he be the good voice of God. I said, God, have you seen it? He doesn't even believe that I've heard your voice. He said, which God? How did he talk to you? What language did he speak to you with? God told you. He said to me, ah, I heard you preaching somewhere, sometime on your TV broadcast, that you're not in, 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 in enmity with God, that you hear the voice of God. He said, God has not spoken to me than told me that you're coming. I'm on my way out to somewhere. I just said to him, I looked at him, I said, hey, man of God. I threw my car key to him, I said, drive me. He took the car, he looked at me. He looked at the car. He said, Range Rover. I said, I said, drive me. I left him. I entered the front of the car. And you don't know what happened, friends. He entered the car. It took us almost four hours to get to this compound from Ababaniki. He now said to me, I told you, I have some places to go. I said, yes. He said, he's going to pump in in all those places. He was popping in here and there. He had the gospel be patient, son, that he's trying to make them know that he has arrived. He can now drive a Range Rover car. So I just went with him. And uh, we were just going from one house to the other, from one meeting to the other meeting. And there was a PFM meeting. He drove me to the PFM meeting and I sat in the car waiting for my yoga. I sat down there. He finished the meeting that took almost two hours for them to run up and he entered the car. He said, let us go. Where do you want to go? I said, I'm going to my house. Let's go to my house. As we drove straight to this compound, we entered the compound. I came out of the car. I said, come outside. I came out. I entered into my room. God said to me, open your wardrobe. I said, my wardrobe. I said, I said open your wardrobe. I opened my wardrobe. He said to me, he said, okay. Tell him to pick anything he wants to wear in this place. Any dress he likes, anything to any suit, any shoe, he should go with it. My God. Ladies and gentlemen, I felt somehow in my inner man. I said, my best suit, that was, I, I had some new suits, new shoes, new shirts, new ties that I really, really like. But that fits me well. And somehow, the man is the same size, the same height, the same color with me. And somehow, he's also from my area, from Abia State. You know the man, you know the story. The man picked dress. He began to pick three suits, three shoes, three shirts. And took my watch that I love so much. And I said, that is what God said I should give to you. Then I took, I said, God, what may say, dash him some money. I had 50,000, I gave him the 50,000 naira. He looked at me and broke down and started crying. As he was crying, I was looking at him. I said, why are you crying? He said, hey. He began to make confessions of his iniquities, of his sin, and the depth of hatred, and the depth of damage he has done to my name, where he has carried my name to, all the kind of evils he has done against me. He began to stay and began to cry. He cried and said to me, let me pray for you. He began to pray. And he prayed a prayer that I said, no, that one, God will not handle it. That one. And what? Because he will be a victim of that prayer. Am I talking friends? I said because the prayer will boomerang on him because he has partaken in doing that evil to me and he's praying that anybody who has done this type of thing to me so and something will happen to me. I said no sir. No sir. No sir. No sir. And I said no to that prayer. And we stood up. I took him out to wait to eat. After eating I dropped him back to his house. Do you know from that day upwards anywhere he sits down and they are saying any nonsense about me he will fight. 
he will quarrel. He will feel like killing. He'll even begin to tell me, avoid this person, avoid this person, avoid the other person. Ladies and gentlemen in the house, I have a good news for you tonight. The only way I want to show you how to kill your enemies, how to stop strife, how to stop enmity, how to stop hatred and wickedness and jealousy and envy against your life, how to make people's mind to change towards you. Ladies and gentlemen, before I come to tell you that, I want to understand that some of them that are speaking evil against you don't even want to speak evil about you. They don't even have hatred in their heart about you. It's just that they belong to a constituency of those who don't like you. So he now began to buy their stories, buy their ideas, and buy their hatred. And they hired, they rented such people to hate you. They have rented men to kill you. When the man that is trying to kill you doesn't have a reason of killing you, he doesn't know why he wants to kill you. And But he's out to destroy you. Ladies and gentlemen, to Hey, every man or woman that has raised up a hand against your life, that has raised up a mouth against your destiny, that has raised out a plan, a demonic proposal against your life, today I scatter their proposals, I scatter their plans, I thwart them again. Someone say, Lord, set me free from those that hate me. Something happened in our club on Thursday. But before that day, there's been this strife in the midst of the members of my club. Strong one. Very pungent. You don't know to tell you, you just see it there. And then it made the leader of our club to be very, very bitter and angry to some certain people in the certain quarters. And something happened. One of us who had this indifference in his heart against the leadership, the mother died. And we had to go to the wake keep of the mother. When we came to the wake keep, suddenly I saw I was not expecting that, that our leader will attend that way keep. Because he's not feeling good in his heart towards the person. Because he believed that the person has done him bad. But he came with his friends. And when he came there, the Meki Fatcher was there. Brother Packaging was there. When he came, he came in the full regalia, the way he goes to occasions. He came like he was coming to the occasion of one of his best friends. Like the auntie died or something related to him. To him. When he came there, he began to spray money like a madman. He was dashing people money. Right there, he began to write a check of a million that he would dash to the man. And when he wrote the check, we were looking for the man. He was nowhere to be found. The man has gone. Left us there. But friends, do you know what happened? That went into the heart of the man. And on Thursday, he found himself at the square, the same man. He came to our club and said, from today, I have returned back to the club. I am this, I am that, and I will support our leader in everything. And I'm going to be giving you people food every Thursday. Seven cost you anyhow you want it to let it be. And ladies and gentlemen, what made it happen is the book of Romans chapter 2, where the Bible says the goodness of the Lord lead the people unto repentance. Friends, there is a power that can change people's mind, change people's thought and opinion towards you. Nobody can overpower or, or silence or quench or dilute the force of goodness, the force of kindness, the force of benevolence cannot be quenched by anybody. For God so long, he said, while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. Why? Goodness of the Lord appeared. God brought forth his goodness. The goodness of God was his son, Jesus Christ. The best thing that God has is the son of God. And he looked at all of us. We are full of sin. Murderers, fornicators, killers, lesbians, homosexuals, pedophiles, fill the earth. Evil men, womanizers, adulterous men and women. We are in the earth. They were doing all kinds of witchcraft on the earth. But God overlooked all those things. I said, 
they cannot change with rot. They cannot change with my anger. I have killed them before in the wilderness. I have killed them before in Sodom and Gomorrah. Upon them alive, there was no change. But now let me change the style. Let me do what change the style. I will not come with fire. I will not come with disaster. I have turned all the whole earth in the time past. And yet they didn't change. What do I do now? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Why? God brought his goodness. The goodness of the Lord changed the Indian him like me. Told me to become a preacher of the gospel. The goodness of the Lord has turned a prostitute to become a preacher of the gospel. The goodness of the Lord has turned a murderer, has turned a kidnapper to become a preacher of the gospel. Let his son change to man. Don't pay evil with evil. When you begin to show people kindness, show them goodness, show them the beauty of God because they don't know it is alien to them. The beauty of God is alien to them. The kindness of his alien to them. So they come from a background of wickedness, a background of hatred, and they want someone that can show them the opposite part of it. The Bible said that the goodness of the Lord, turn it into repentance. What has your wife done? What has your husband done? What has your friend done? What has your business partner done to you? There is something you ladies and gentlemen, take your eyes off from it and rise above the action. Rise above what he or she has done. When you rise above it and begin to do the needful, do the right thing, ladies and gentlemen, they will come on their knees begging. They will repent, they will change, and their life will change. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says overcoming evil with good. Overcoming evil with good is a key to deliverance. It's a key to repentance. It's a key to healing. It's a key to reconciliation. It is a key to restoration. Who is it that has been left destroyed, has destroyed your life and is in the business of trying to renew you the more? The Bible says the goodness of the Lord. It is difficult. <laughs> it's difficult because you have allowed your earthly nature to overcome your divinity. When you allow your divine nature to be in action, when you are wake up, it is time for us to wake up the divinity in us. Am I talking, friend? Are you listening to me? It's time for us to operate above humanity. Humanity is, do me, I do you, God, no go first. But divinity is, you do me, I forgive you, I pray for you, change. Love! Who can separate us from the love of God, said the man, because people try to separate us from separating from the love of God. They reminded God of all the evil he had done, of what the people killed, but the Bible says he refused to be separated. God said, I cannot be separated. Who has, who, who will separate us from the love of God? Is he not the same God that judges? Is he not the same God that punishes? Is he not the same dog that forgives? He said, no man. It was a no man. No man can separate us from the love of God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? God so love you, so love me, that your evil nature does not stop him from showing you kindness. That's why the rain falls for the man who finished killing and falls for the man that finished saving life. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The goodness of the Lord. Someone shout the goodness of the Lord. Someone shout the goodness of the Lord. You are it inside you. God is looking for something that can release it to the world. Set the goodness of God free. Allow it to come into manifestation. And see God change your world. And see God change your nation. A man called me on the phone and was telling me all kinds of evil things that the wife did. And he said to me, I am now out of the country to London. And I said to him, if you want your home to be healed, return back to your house. I even posted it on the forum. Return back. There was something. The lady said to me, it is over between me and my husband. I will not want to use my eyes to see the father of my husband anymore. He is evil. I don't want to see my younger brother, the younger brother to my husband. Even my younger brother, his own younger brother, she doesn't want to see. I said, why? He said, if I tell you how my younger brother was bringing girlfriend to my husband, you will know that you're supposed to die. <laughs> and I laughed at him. I laughed at him. I said, let me tell you something, brother. Sister, if that man dies now, you will suffer. Because it is cheaper to keep alive than to bury. And I said to her, you know what you're going to do? Do some gifts. 
Make some gifts. Give him some gifts. Give your children some gifts. And he obeyed me and gave the brother a gift. He gave the brother one of the houses they have in Lagos. He said, you and your wife and children move into there. And you know, all the women, all the boys, the brother's children, three, uh, four girls, all bear his, her name. And she was godmother to all of them. <laughs> Am I talking, friends? And when he did that, the husband heard that the brother has received a new house, one of their houses, and they've all moved into that place. He called his wife. He said, okay, this is your brother that was encouraging me. He said, the other girl, the other day, he caught me with it. It was your brother that brought it. The other one does, he said, I know. And I know you're a wicked man. That at the end of the day, we'll expose him. I know ahead of time, he has already asked me for forgiveness. That is why I gave him the car, the house. He said, you, you need to repent as well. The man came back and began to cry. Then the brother next said to him, to her, it is you hate the father, your father-in-law. Your father-in-law has always been locked ahead with your husband. He's against him in everything he's doing. But the story came and told him that your father-in-law hates you. Some of you have hated your in-laws who are innocent. They did nothing to you. And you don't even know that they like you. You hate them for nothing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The marriage got restored just because a man showed the goodness of the Lord. Overcoming evil with good. Overcoming evil. It is difficult. It, I know you get a scripture that you used to dilute scripture. You will say, ah, uh -uh, no matter how you show a wicked man goodness, he can never learn how to do righteousness. Listen, God is not asking, it is not what you do to a man that will make him become in right standing with God. It is the Holy Ghost that will convict him of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So when you're doing good, the Holy Ghost will step in with your goodness. Am I talking, friend? There is something that carries the spirit of reconciliation, restoration, healing, and deliverance to a family, into a life. It's called the spirit of goodness. Vehicle called goodness. It's what carries God into a family. It's what carries God into a relationship. It's what carries God into a church. It's what carries God into a business. And when it comes in as a vehicle, the people will repent and they will begin to be in right standing with God. The goodness of the Lord overcoming evil with goodness. For the goodness of the Lord lead the people to repent us. Tonight, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that will judge the dead and living, that you begin to learn how to do good. How to do good. How to do good. How to do good. How to feed your enemies. And allow God. Shall we all stand up?